Okay, uh, today we're going to look at calibrating a cheap budget TV with um, a cell phone app um, and we're looking at HDR today um, and the HDR formats um, including Dolby Vision. Um, so I'm using the Spears and Muntzel test disc uh, to get all my test patterns. So um, yeah, let's take a look at this. Um, so you can choose any of the HDR formats uh, here <clears throat> and you can choose your uh, peak luminance and things like that up to 10,000 nits. So um, first off I was doing okay up until about 40% um, and I'll show you. So just real quick, uh, this is the two-step uh, color tuner and this is a 11 step um, and you can go from 5% all the way up to 100%. Uh, SDR on my previous video on part 2 uh, calibrated absolutely perfectly all the way up to 100% and 100% was 6300 Kelvin that's about as much as I could get but it was 6500 the entire way up so it was excellent and uh, yeah this is just a picture of me with the 4k player connected to the TV uh, with a 10% window pattern um, and you do that from 5% all the way up to 100%. So uh, in HDR what are we getting? Um, well it started off um, <clears throat> with me calibrating and f up to the first 40% I could get 6500 Kelvin and I was like, all right, this is good. I wasn't get a war I was not getting the warning sign for low level light or anything like that. Calibrated really nicely. Uh, so we're ten percent here. Um, uh, forget that there's six thousand for now. Um, and we get to 40 uh, forty percent here. And I cannot budge this. Like I could not get this to uh, to sixty five hundred k. It was not. It was none of the, the settings that I was using did not have any impact. So I, I then went to the two step and see if that had an impact, it had zero impact. And, um, you know, my mind started clicking over. So um, up to 50%, again, forget the, the fact that there's 6,000 for now because I'll explain that in a minute. <clears throat> so uh, we go to 50%. And I'm getting this low light output thing again, um, which I assumed was power, um, and, and, I, and I think it is. It's the amount of power that the TV can really uh, push out, and is capable of. You could almost look at it a, a way as well as the TV is almost clipping its own its own power. It's just it's having to like um, the power draw is like too much for the TV, and it actually has to lower the power. I think something like that is going on. I made sure all the TV wasn't in like power saving mode and you know things like that. Uh, but this is just the way it is from a budget TV. This is a Vizio 40 inch. Um, I think it was like about 150 to 250 dollars. Uh, really cheap. It's advertised as having as having a HDR10 and Dolby Vision. And um, the more I think about that now, from a two hundred and something dollar TV, the more you, the more you realise that's you know, not that's not real. That's not real HDR. It's not going to be real HDR at all. So I continued to go up the scale, and um, we were met. We these default measurements here were measuring sixty two hundred Kelvin, sixty one. Um, and they were the default measurements. Now, um, what I did this time is because I, I didn't really know, I didn't really know where to go with this. Um, <clears throat> and the reason is because at forty percent, like I said, I could not change uh, the setting. So um, my first thought was because this this had the the power output issue because uh, I started calibrating a hundred percent and. I could not raise this to 6500. It would not go further. However, you could bring it down, which said to me, which in my mind I thought to myself, somehow we're clipping the amount of color that is is available right now. Um, and this got me thinking about like color space 
and things like that. Um, what I think this TV is doing is um, converting the REC uh, or BT2020 color space back into SDR, or not SDR, but into REC 709. Um, the reason I say that is because um, <clears throat> the sliders that I'm using to calibrate just have no effect and I think it's because it's um, I think these these kind of measurements uh, here and these these controls are trying to calibrate something within the rec 709 space and as soon as you go above that um, even if you lower this to say negative 50 which would be the max for this TV it has absolutely no effect because we, if the color exists in B, uh, BT2020, it just can't pull it down into the Rec 709 color space. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think just think there's some type of conversion going on here. Or the TV itself is just clipping. We, we've clipped out the HDR signal because it is in uh, BT2020 color space. We're just clipping it. We, we're just completely click, uh, clipping out the internal controls that we have. So um, uh, while I was calibrating last night, I was trying to think about a way how to deal with this. And the f my first thought was, <clears throat> you know what? Let's lower the color temperature to 6,000 and see if everything then can be even. Because the goal here is, is to create a grayscale um, that even though it might not be accurate to say 6,500 Kelvin, um, is accurate the entire way up uh, the grayscale. Um, and that's basically what I tried. And again, 40%, uh, it, it wouldn't budge. I, I did not have the, the controls available in the two step or the 11 step to uh, try this. Now, um, there's like an automatic uh, backlight or dynamic backlight that I figured out that the TV had that had no effect on this like kind of limitation that we have here <clears throat> of like 6200 to 6250 uh, Kelvin um, in HDR mode. Um, I tried uh, lowering the actual backlight to zero. Had zero that had no effect because I thought maybe this is a power consumption issue internally. Um, I tried lowering everything on the two-step calibration on uh, this page, uh, on that page there. All, all of these were like negative 50, had no effect. Um, brightness and all of this, negative, everything was negative and it had no effect on this. It had zero effect. So, um, uh, yeah, after sleeping on this, um, my 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 assumption was uh, now was somehow it's something to do with the color space, um, and it's outside of calibration. Uh, that was my that was my first thought this morning when I woke up. I was like, something's just not correct here. So, um, regardless, I tried this uh, calibration and. Um, what I noticed was, after watching content, um, it looked to me as though it was pushing red. Now, in theory, we, we are warmer. We're warmer than, than we are. And I uh, ran some demos, uh, a couple of demo, the demo scene here. Now, you can't see it in this screenshot because the camera is actually correcting for this. Um, but there's a lot of red in the clouds here. And uh, to my eyes, I could see right away that it had ba basically had bit depth error problems, and it just didn't look to me. It just did not look natural whatsoever. So on the same screenshot here, I paused this and I reset the calibration. And after resetting the calibration, the default actually looked better. So uh, yeah, this um, really is the limitation of. The, not the app, but the uh, TV itself. Um, now, in my opinion, if you had like had something like this, like a TV like this, like two hundred and fifty dollars, and it does have HDR and it does have um, Dolby Vision, 
chances are they're using some type of weird scaling system that's going on here, converting color maybe to uh, to an SDR type uh, container, um, things like that. Uh, even at 350 nits, which is some of the things I tried, I just you know I could not get around this uh, limitation. So um, I did this with Dolby Vision, and Dolby Vision me measures exactly the same. Um, the uh, and another issue I actually ran into with um, Dolby Vision was um, uh, Black Crush. And I don't mean, uh, hey, let's just raise the brightness until we get out of Black Crush. It actually crushed blacks. The signal clipped the blacks. And I raised the brightness, and all it did was raise the black level, but none of the detail came in. So, you know, there's some weird, um, goofy stuff going on with uh, some of these cheap TVs that you may not really think about. I mean, I don't think about this because, you know, I have a, I have an LG C9 uh, OLED, 77 inch. Um, which at the time of when it was released, probably like f uh, four or five years ago, uh, was pretty much the the high end TV to have. Um, and you know, when you look at that uh, for movies every single day, like I do, um, when you see some of the limitations and the struggles that these lower TVs have, you know, it's uh, y you can really see where they're cutting corners here. Um, in the end, um, I don't actually watch HDR on my office TV because that's what this is. So um, I was not like kind of thrown off by this. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me. But um, imagine uh, you was um, a unprofessional calibrator, right? You just uh, you did it as a hobby, but you also you know, you went around people's houses, even with the cell phone, right? And you, you know, it was $25 a, a uh, calibration. If you ran into this type of problem, um, the, the obviously the, the best thing you, you then should do is talk to your, um, you know, the, the homeowner, um, you know, the TV owner, and say, look, this is the problems that we're running into with HDR and Dolby Vision. Um, so if, if I was on, like, let's just say I was on a job, right? And I was using this phone as a calibration tool. Um, uh, even if you had a professional piece of calibration, it would still reveal this. So um, that is one benefit of this phone. It actually reveals, hey, um, don't, use Dol don't use Dolby Vision or HDR. Um, and that's what I would tell somebody that if they had this these type of results, um, if your device, uh, your 4K player, your Roku, your uh, whatever whatever you're using to watch content with, if it has options for turning HDR off and Dolby Vision off, I would 100% consider that um, for a TV like this. And again, the reason is is because uh, uh, Vizio calibration. This is the calibration of the SDR. 6,500, in the corner here, you can always see the uh, the percents that we're at. So if I don't call it out, uh, that's what it is. 50, 60, 70. We're getting some uh, light problems there, but we're still measuring 6,500, 6,500. And again, we're getting this maybe this power output uh, thing again, even in SDR. Um, but we're measuring 6,500, uh, 6,500, look, the entire way up. Uh, and we get light output issues at around 70%, right? Um, SDR, I've been watching some more SDR this morning. Uh, just the news. Um, last night I watched um, some live streams of people playing games and stuff. And in 6500K, uh, the uh, color saturation is actually much less. Um, it looks more natural. Um, so, you know, if it, when you think about that, say with video games and stuff, um, you know, potentially you could want a little bit more saturation in your colors. 
with 6500 um, at least on this TV you know some some TVs like OLED still retain that punch of color um, and remember this is a, an LCD so um, yeah very very interesting um, so yeah um, I just with this TV specifically I do not advise using HDR whatsoever I could tell right away that after not being able to calibrate this in any way meant that somehow the controls or the color inside the TV somehow is being clipped and uh, it will not allow any more through so some of the negative numbers yes you could get away with but again I watched it back on on content and I thought no this just does not look right so what would I do um, what is actually the best thing to do with this TV because um, I, I had this uh, idea of uh, calibrating to 66,000 uh, Kelvin making everything balanced so we're bringing things down so you take the pressure off of the TV um, I don't think that's the best thing to do anymore on a TV like this again if you if you're completely having limitations it's just blocking you up to 40 percent right here 40 percent is 6400 K and that could not be changed right I could not go any higher you couldn't go to 6500 ke uh, Kelvin I was negative 50 on blue here um, so I want you to think about things like that the actual controls are just maxed out absolutely maxed out and if you put positive red um, we're, we're, we're just not budging enough and, and at this point I was like am I on the correct 40% that's because that's maybe what some of you might be thinking as well like are you sure you're on 40% so I went back to the menu 40% I went back to uh, here uh, to check the gain here was 40% and I was like come on something's going on here what is going on but right here is where the TV essentially starts to clip out and um, if I had a chart maybe of uh, the color space of say Rec 709 uh, to DC uh, D is it DCI P3 um, I think and then then BT now here's what I'm thinking is happening is we're, we're getting out of range of Rec 709 by at least for when we're at the 40 percent range here and we just go further and further out so where the controls just don't have any uh, they don't work that's what I think is happening so um, my advice for like a TV like this and like you know if you was in the field right and you was um, just going around people's houses and calibrating TVs is um, get an average of these so if you if you quickly found out this issue that you got to 40% and you had zero control 6400 uh, Kelvin was as good as you could get it could not get any better what I would then do is recalibrate 30% to 6400 which I could do and 20% to 6400 again which I could I believe I could do all of these I could actually calibrate the rest of the the rest of the TV has to remain uncalibrated it just it's just that's just the way it is because um, the only time that I saw this uh, like magenta issue and this low um, this bit depth error problem was when I lowered uh, the color temperature like this um, so it appears that the more you lower the color temperature into warmer even though this scale may say still 1% green it does have a slight magenta look to it so that's on this TV that may not be on an OLED that may not you know with an OLED you, you've, you're gonna have a lot more um, solidarity in your colors and things like that but on this TV um, it, uh, the balance was still a little off I think you you need 2% green at least to make this work so yeah 6400 all the way down to 5% that should clear up that um, kind of like bit depth error look in cl dark clouds and things like that that I was seeing um, so yeah then see what the picture looks like but um, I did some tests last night of just default uh, HDR and Dolby Vision SDR look better 
SDR look better because it's calibrated beautifully, you know, grayscale perfectly clean the entire way up, 2% green the entire way up, calibrated excellently, actually looked better than HDR and Dolby Vision. So again, these small TVs and budget TVs, yeah, great, they've got the sticker on for HDR and Dolby Vision, but it's just a market employ, you know. There's no actual power and color volume coming from this TV. What do you expect? I mean, again, what do I expect? You know, from a $250, maybe $300, or whatever it was, TV, right? Um, you, you, you've, you've hit the, uh, the ceiling, um, so to speak, for what you're able to do with this TV. And again, in, in, um, with this t type of TV, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure who, who would buy a 40-inch TV to watch movies on. I think, I think, I really do think you should be going a lot hotter, larger, but maybe there are some limitations. Um, yeah, I just don't advise uh, these uh, high dynamic range formats. Um, when you think about this as well, even the, uh, the OLEDs, you know, we're still, um, we still have brightness limitations on, on an OLED. You know, at um, you know five thousand dollar TVs, um, we may have only just got up to a thousand nits, but full screen we still we can still only do about two hundred nits. So um, if you think about it from that point of view, that even on the best TVs now, we're still having brightness uh, limitations, even some black level uh, crushing um, and things like that, even with the best TVs. Um, so I really see the struggle on the budget and um, again I would not be surprised if they are um, somehow converting color space into um, something else and that's the cause of why I'm lacking control on the on on my uh, gains and my um, cuts so um, in the end, uh, from a budget TV and again the, the cell phone, I'm very happy because all of the content that I watch is SDR and now knowing that as well, um, I would set my uh, uh, fire stick, which I have downstairs, I'm turning Dolby Vision off because if there's ever a show in HDR or Dolby Vision, I don't want that passing as Dolby Vision. I want to keep that in, in SDR because the TV handles SDR really nicely. And again, I'm watching this in an office. So um, depending on your setup, um, if you want more from HDR, you have to, you, you have to pay more, right? Um, I have a 55 or a 65 inch TV downstairs. A Hisense, might be like an S7, I think that's what they're called, I can't remember now. Um, and I believe Artings reviewed that and they've obviously calibrated the TV. So um, for me that's probably one of the best things to do is to uh, go to Artings, see how the TV calibrates itself. If it is, that is absolutely trash, just try and avoid it. Look, if you're, in for, if you're looking for a budget TV, look for their best budget TVs um, that actually calibrate well um, in HDR and SDR, if that's what you're looking for. But if you're like me, where this TV is just for the office, um, it's not a bad, it, it, it's, it's a decent TV for SDR. So um, I wanted to get this video out there because um, everybody's excited right now. I, I've seen a few more videos about this uh, people using this app and um, it is exciting. Um, but um, is anybody running into troubles on very cheap TVs where number one you have limited power output? Uh, where your colors potentially are clipping and you can't go above 6,000 uh, Kelvin like this. Is SDR the only way to use uh, that TV downstairs? Um, do you make concessions like, okay, so I've figured out that 40% is the limitation. I'm going to make sure the bottom of the grayscale here is evenly clean. 
I'm not going to calibrate any higher up because I can't anyway. I have no effect here. I'm just going to do the best I can. Like I'm round um, a customer's house, right? Let's just say, or a friend's house calibrating their TV. I run into this issue. Just do the best you can. You could you could even um, calibrate everything to 6,500 Kelvin, 6,500 here at 10%, 20, 30, and then you get here and you're blo you're blocked, right? You, you you can't go any higher than 6,400. That's the TV. That's it. You, you, that's the limit of this TV. I, you couldn't do anymore. So and I checked. I trust me. I I checked every setting on the TV. Um, to avoid this, lowering the color, lowering the contrast, lowering brightness, without it looking bad, no, you, you, you can't do anything, you're completely restricted. So, um, yeah, so my t I've had, I have a TV outside that I was going to calibrate, um, but it is, I think it was $150, and it's like a 24-inch. Right, it's just for outside. Instead of doing that TV, um, which I'm uh, sometime I'm going to do, I want to do my high sense downstairs because I think that's got more range. There's more power there. It should be able to calibrate very, very nicely in HDR and uh, SDR, I think. So, um, and uh, yeah, so in the end, I'm I'm happy with this TV. Uh, I keep everything now in SDR, and. Uh, it, it, it shows again that this uh, app is actually a really good tool because um, it shows me uh, the weakness in HDR. It showed me um, the weakness in Dolby Vision. Uh, it showed me the... well, I didn't need to calibrate to see this, but the clipping, black level clipping issue, signal clipping issue, um, uh, around... Um, the signal just clips out at, at like 5% black. You can't, you cannot see any more detail past that. So um, the tone mapping is, you know, it's, yeah, it's it's really it's very poor. But again, great S, I would honestly say a great SDR uh, calibration. Looks good for LCD, mind you. Again, <laughs> I'm used to looking uh, at a OLED that is that has blacks, that has dynamics, that has color punch, vibrancy, high contrast, very dynamic. And to look at images like this, yes, it's um, it's not as good, right? LCD um, as a TV standard, really, a uh, technology is never going to be as good as an OLED. It's just never going to have that punch and that pop uh, that you get from an OLED. But just from a balance point of view, me watching in the office, uh, this TV is uh, impressive now. From the news uh, to me watching a show uh, while we work, looks good. There's no hues, there's no um, odd colors that look wrong. But you can't use HDR or Dolby Vision. As advertised, <laughs> can't do it. You can't do it. Um, and l unless there's some really weird setup that somebody gets back to me and say, hey, try this, it worked for me. But you'd have to do some real janky settings, I think, to, e to make this actually calibrate right with what type of uh, brightness output. I mean, I just, you know, I just don't know. So, um, again, avoid HDR. SDR is excellent, and I assume that for most TVs under $500, might be falling into this range as well. Of, I, I don't know. You can check to see how good uh, the HDR formats do look, but anything under $500, I would just consider. Look, I, this is an SDR TV, right? Make he, make SDR look good, and you can. You can with this app. So that is the beauty about it. Not all is lost when you have issue, run into issues like this. You still have SDR. You know, the tried and tested uh, SDR still works. So um, yeah, wanted to get this video out there to show some of the uh, 
problems you can run into with the uh, budget TVs. Um, you know, it's okay with my C9. You you know, you have perfect, essentially perfect grayscale the entire way up and down. Uh, but uh, to run into issues like this is, it was actually a little frustrating. Um, I was, you know, I was getting a little bit uh, agitated by this because I just wanted to calibrate everything to 6500 Kelvin like I did STR. And, uh, you know, you, you take a break for five minutes and you think, don't worry about it. You know, we've hit the, we've hit the ceiling for performance. They're obviously doing something internally that is either clipping uh, the, the, the controls or the color space is like also being mismanaged and things like that. And it just doesn't look good. Run your TV in SDR. This is the best it can look. You know, so, um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, again, the uh, Spears and Munsell disc uh, provides all the patterns. This is, uh, I've used this, I think I'm using this now more than I did the, the, the original disc. So uh, this is, uh, I'll get my good use out of this. And this is fun to me. So um, yeah, uh, another TV next and hopefully it doesn't give me these issues so <laughs> and this frustration. But uh, yeah, appreciate you watching. And uh, this is part three. This is really the end of the Vizio series of uh, budget uh, calibration, I'll say. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is um, not maybe split things up anymore into, say, uh, SDR and uh, HDR on my next, on my Hisense TV downstairs. I'm just going to capture some screenshots um, like I do, go over it, talk about it. How did the TV calibrate from start to finish? Uh, were there any issues that I could, that, that I appeared to run into and things like that? Um, and just see how it calibrates again and, and see how it looks. Like when I watch content like uh, this, this disc on there, how does it look compared to my OLED? Sure, you're going to get some washed out, um, a washed out look because it's LCD. Um, it's not going to have that punch and that clarity that OLED has. But, um, you know, when you have a grayscale that is relatively smooth all the way up, again, I, hopefully I don't run into issues, uh, how good does this look? So, again, yeah, appreciate you watching and uh, have a good day. If you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, if, you, if you're using the app now, um, have you tried calibrating your TV? And performance, how is it? Um, you know, have you run into any issues like this where uh, it doesn't quite, it doesn't have the power to measure certain um, percent values on these window pans? So, uh, all right, yeah, appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.